All right, good evening. Hello, it's Sharona. You're watching The Extra Point. We come to you live every Friday night, usually at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, but I had a special guest um, who is on tonight, and he needed to uh, move the hour back. We're very happy to accommodate him. Um, as you know, we talk AFC and NFC South here on this show. Be sure to check out my latest article for National Grid Iron Network, um, AFC South Spotlight on r Impact Rookies um, who might be able to, to make a name for themselves in um, training camps, which open very, very, very soon. Real football is almost back, Joseph. I want to go ahead and bring you in and let everybody get to know you. We're going to spend some time uh, getting... You know, a little bit of information about you, but before we start, tell everybody who you are and where they can find you on Twitter and social media. Okay, my name is Joseph Yoon. Uh, I write for MusicCityMiracles.com, and my Twitter handle is DuckingNulls247. It's a play on words, basically. Uh, well, I was going to ask you about it. Explain your Twitter handle to me. Well, it was during the... Right at the beginning of the Jimbo Fisher era, where he was ah. and so I decided, you know, I'm an Oregon fan, fan as well, so I admire their offense a lot. Yeah, it's a pretty so, offense. So, and uh, I can't, you know, I really can't say any bad words on Twitter, so. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. All right then. Um, yeah, well, you can, but it's probably not the best and smartest thing to do. Well, obviously, I know you from MCM. Um, I wrote for MCM, Titans MCM, for a while, and I hope to still do um, some guest columns there. Unfortunately, I have taken on so many different commitments, and I'm now covering the Titans for... Um, for a couple of uh, different places, so I just have I don't. There's only a, so much of me, so hopefully we can make that happen. I think that you're actually the first MCM guy that I've had on here, though I know um, Jimmy and I talked about him coming on some of my shows, and I, he actually did come on the radio show. But um, I think that you're actually the first one officially. So welcome, welcome MCM welcome. guys. Well, thank you. <laughs> now, do you play fantasy football? I think that you do, because I think we played in one MCM league together last year. Uh, yeah, I do play. I'm not sure what leagues I belong to. I was like in like ten of them. Oh yeah, I was in like six or seven too. I know it was a whole lot. I'm not definitely not going to do as many this year. Um, now, you're a big college football guy, as your Twitter handle and your writing shows. How did you um, how did you get into writing about college sports, and how did you get hooked up with MCM? Well, I was just, at the beginning, I was doing fan posts, and Jimmy liked my writing style and all the, yeah, and saw that I had a, some time, a level of talent. <laughs> Well, I could think so anyway. Um, and then it all started going down there from there. So, Yeah, now if you don't know, um, MCM, Music City Miracles, named after the very infamous play um, playoff game against the Bills back in January of 2000. Um, I was there. I still get goosebumps. Um, it's a member of SB Nation, and SB Nation is a terrific fan community Um and as Joseph mentioned, they um, you can do fan posts, which is I think great. And uh, I know a lot of people who have uh, been able to transition from you know fan posts and and do um, other stuff. Now you like to to look at film and look at players, right? I mean, yeah. look at players in in the sense of. Uh, analyze them. I'm not talking about anything else. You gotta be yeah. careful nowadays, right? I mean, yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Now, how did you get into doing that? What what led you to do that? Well, I was watching um, way back in the day, uh, Mel Kiper and what's his name, Mc, Todd McShay, do the draft on ESPN way back when they started on a Saturday and had like ten hour first rounds. Back the good old days, the yeah. weekend draft. Yeah, 
So I thought it was an interesting thing to watch, and then so I said, "Hey, why why not do this a full time thing?" So, um, are you? Is that something that you're looking to get into? Do you do any scouting for any teams or or anybody? Uh, not yet. I'm just doing it as a little side project to my current job. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I understand. You gotta. The more you can do, right? And so, um, I just didn't know. I was curious about that. Um, you wrote a, a pretty interesting article about um, NFL offenses. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, uh, you notice with all the drafts lately, you see the quarterbacks like RG three, Andrew Luck to a certain extent, Cam Newton, and those guys. And because they came from spread offenses in college, mm -hmm. so you would think the talent transitioned to the league, where the defenses might gear up to stop them and hire more coaches, and then to that have stopped them in the past, and then draft you know the offensive skill talent around the quarterbacks that have learned in the offense for three, four years. Yeah, it's definitely become a trend. Um, you know, everything is kind of cyclical, and there are still, obviously, still college teams that produce um, the prototypical drop back, you know, in a prototypical NFL quarterback, but not that, not as many as you know. Again, it's cyclical, and it kind of goes in cycles. Um, what you see. Right now, the the major talent, the big guys, mostly coming from those type offenses. So it was only natural that it would, you know, you know. And with the new um, rookie Wade scale, the the um, the grid system, you you see teams starting to play these guys earlier, and so it makes more sense to adapt what they're doing to what they can do because you just have less time to to figure out what you have so um, all right well now do you um, now you obviously you write on a Titans website are you a Titans fan I am do you, you consider yourself a Titans fan are you a fan of any other NFL team uh, well I like to read on the hometown Falcons from time to time well, I was going to ask you where you were from because I don't think that I ever knew that. You're from the Atlanta area? Yes, ma'am. Okay, awesome. The big, the big sprawling metropolis of Hotlanta. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, do you know Zach Law? Um, he lives, not really. He's, yeah. he's from that area. Lives in, he lives, not from that area. He lives there. So, um... All right, so uh, let's talk some. Well, let's before we get too far away from college football, give us your predictions um, for the SEC and then um, some of the other big conferences. What do you expect to see? You know, the SEC to me seems to be more open, maybe a little bit this year than it has been. Um, who are the other teams that you think, or the you know, who who do you expect to be big players this year? Well, out of the East, it's uh, I would say Georgia that they're always in there. But uh, what I'm interested in seeing is Florida and how their new offensive corner does. Yeah. With that offense. Yeah, that's yeah. I want to see how Vanderbilt does as well with a new coach. Yeah, um, I'm very anxious to see how Vanderbilt does too. Um, a team that was really on the rise. It, gosh, it sort of all just, I won't say it fell apart, but it, um, the, the bloom sort of fell off the rose when Jimmy Franklin left. So, um, but I like Derek Mason, don't you? Yeah, I liked what I've heard from him so far. Now the question is going to be um, recruiting, and I guess we'll see, right? So, much to be seen about that. What about the Tennessee Vols? How do you see them doing this year under second year new head coach, Miss Jones? Um, uh, probably, I want to see how their schedule shakes out because they have a new quarterback and 
well, an old one. Quarterbacks. <laughs> they may be running a quarterback by committee. Yes, yeah, so I want to see how. They're saying, they're saying that they're going to start the, uh, the uh, yeah, it, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. What about, you know, Auburn seems to be getting a lot of buzz. What do you think about them? Uh, I don't like them to repeat because they lost too much on defense, and then they, they had lost a, a lot, lot of, didn't they? they? They had a whole lot of plays bounced their way last year. Yeah, yeah. So what about the other conferences? Who do you see being? Um, what about Penn State? What do you see Penn State doing? I see them in the middle of the pack of the Big Ten because it's always going to be Michigan State and uh, Ohio State and Michigan those top three, and I want to see how Nebraska does. They're finally out of the Taylor Martinez era. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk some um, professional football then. Um, kind of anxious to see what happens with college football this year. Won't be long. You know, we'll start to, to hear a little bit more as, wow, yeah, you know, school's going to be – starting back pretty soon. It's amazing. July is almost halfway over. It was just like yesterday. It was the 4th of July and I woke up and now it's, what today is the 11th or 12th? Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Um, the AFC South, and you're obviously familiar with the Tennessee Titans. First of all, let me get your opinion on the Titans draft. Um, it was it was pretty good. They got a lot of starters or potential starters on the road. You think? Who do you see are the starters on that rust on that um, draft list? Uh, obviously Taylor Lewan, the first round pick. Eventually, probably eventually. as early as this 2000. And Daquan Jones, he's I think he's the most underrated pick of the draft class because. He never. He was a big, big body nose tackle, kind of like Vince Wilfork, who did all the dirty work for Penn State and never got any of the credit. But we once we get Horton on him, he'll improve a lot. <clears throat> I just wrote an article about um, Daquan Jones and watched a lot of film on him. Um, very impressive at times. Extremely impressive at times on tape. I compared him, watching him, and I see what you mean about Vince, but watching him, I kept thinking Albert Hainsworth. That's the guy that just kept coming to mind as I was watching him. And um, But starter, I mean, when you're talking about defense and, def and the, the defensive line, and he's obviously a guy who could play in more than one spot, and they're going to run a high defense and you're going to see some different fronts from them it's kind of hard to say he'll be a starter because that's so rotational in a way don't you yeah. think yeah it's just always going to have about eight nine bodies on the line every game yeah, I'm kind of anxious to see how many defensive linemen um, the Titans carry this year uh, I said that probably um, somewhere around eight or nine. What do you think? I think I think that as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, you think they they might they might be eight because they'll probably um, want to go a little bit linebacker heavy, you know, because of the the new. Um, the new defense. So, um, yeah, you know, Taylor Lewan uh, is, you would think that they, with, given that they drafted him so high and, and whatnot, that they consider him to be their left tackle future. I don't see him, I mean, I don't think that you're going to see him at left tackle in 2014, barring something bad happening with Michael Ruse. Either and, and I don't see him underperforming because he's still playing at an extremely high level. So do you think that he can take, um, come into training camp and take Michael Orr's job at right tackle? Well, I, I think it will be a training camp long battle. 
uh, with Ower winning out because of his experience. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think so too. I think um, I think you're looking at a basically a red shirt year from him, and um, you know you'll see him. They'll let Michael Ruse play out his contract, and um, then it'll be Sayonara, and they'll turn to um, Taylor Lewan and, and because he really is a prototypical left tackle. He's not a right tackle. He doesn't have that. Um, he, he's not a David Stewart by by any means. And that, that nothing wrong with that. I think that he'll be a, a good left tackle. He's still got a lot of things to work on in terms of cleaning up his game. And I really am concerned about his tendency to grab face masks. Uh, he's going to have to learn to to not to do that. That's bad. <laughs> Can't be doing that. So, um, so what are your thoughts? Some bishop saying, is he going to be um, the the ground and pound kind of running back? That I think so. Uh, he's also versatile in the passing game. He can flare out for screen and go into the slot some. But I think he'll be in a rotation with Sean Green if he's healthy. And then obviously Dexter McCluster and possibly Jackie Battle if he makes the roster. Yeah, you know, I saw somebody um, tweet that Jackie Battle had been um, playing a, a few plays in, in mini camps and um, OTAs at fullback. So it's um, I think that they'll carry four, maybe five um, running backs, including you know the the fullback position. I'm curious to see if they're going to use a fullback. You know they. They kept um, Quinn Johnson and used either Quinn Johnson or Colin Mooney on the roster. But, you know, at, at time, I mean, there were games where those guys, when they were act, I mean, they were always active, but they got like maybe six snaps, 12 snaps, something like that. Just kind of seems like a, if, if that's the way you're going to use your fullback, to me, that's a waste of a roster spot. Don't you think? Yeah. It's, I mean, I think that you can do, you you can be far more efficient than that. Yeah, unless so. our flag is Colbert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm anxious to see how that rotation shakes out. Your Mr. McCluster get in that as well, and um, you know, I mean, they've got options, and I, I agree with you. I think Sean Green is still going to be in the mix. I don't know about Jackie Battle. I don't know that they know. I mean, we're going to have to get in training camp and put the pads on and see, you know, see what happens then. What are your thoughts on, you ha haven't mentioned them, I just wrote an article about Marcus Huff. What did you think about him? Uh, I haven't studied him that much, but once I broke down the tape and then watched all his plays and read all their other reports, He's uh he's a good in the box safety where he doesn't have to make a read. He's not you know the Ed Reed of the defense where he's not the field general where he has to constantly make adjusting and then reading. Why do you think everybody believes he's going to play safety? He only played safety one year, played cornerback three years. Uh, I think he'll be our utility back if you want to put it that way. It's still we can be with Khalid Wooten, a pick from last year. Yeah. Um, see, Khalid Wooten, to me, does, looks more like a safety. He definitely, to me, seems more like that in-the-box um, type safety build, you know, build-wise. Um, they've got some young guys. Do you think that Tommy Campbell can get back in that mix and compete at that right cornerback spot again? I think uh, we we've seen the last of uh, Mr. Campbell as a legitimate starter. I think he'll just play special teams or yeah. 
or well, if if he, if he's not legitimately in that competition, I mean, I don't know that what, they wouldn't even keep him on the roster, would they? Because they've got these other younger guys. Yeah, I think Wizen Hill will fall in love with his uh, physical attributes. Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess we'll see. Um, they'll keep a limited number of defensive backs as well. And Khalid Wooten, despite having return skills and really having a solid camp last year, I thought he ended up on the practice squad and then um, due to injuries and whatnot got you know, promote, promoted to the 53. But, um, yeah, I mean, a lot of bodies there. I can't... A lot of bodies there, a lot of bodies at defensive on, on the defensive line. Titans have are going to have some decisions to make. That's not necessarily a bad problem to have, but you know it's definitely going to be very crowded at certain positions. What about um, Avery Williamson? I like him. He's your, your classic run stuff and middle linebacker that will play... Th three downs, and then we'll come on fourth down on special teams as a gunner or something. But yeah, I really like this film out of Kentucky, because so Kentucky hired Florida State's defense coordinator Mark Stoops, and he's part of the famous Stoops family, so in Stoops defense, you have, you have to be intelligent to play, pretty much. If you don't pick up a playbook, you're pretty much on the bench the entire time. Yeah, he was one of my favorite linebackers in this draft. I thought the Titans got a steal in the fifth round, snagging him. Um, I just did an AFC South preview, and the two guys I picked to be possible imp impact players th this year who could have strong camps and be possible impact players this year for the Titans were Bishop, Bishop Sankey and Avery Williamson. Those were my two. And I'm, and it's not that I don't think Daquan Jones isn't going to get opportunities. I just, there's so many defensive linemen. I don't know where he's going to fit in in that mix. Is he, you know, I, I'm just not sure that he's going to, to, to be able to work his way into that rotation this season. I just don't know. Um, who, who do you think would be the odd man out on on the defensive line if the Titans had to pick today? Um, uh, Sammy Lee, I think he, they're done with him based on his contract and his level of production last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw him. Some sites have him listed as a nose tackle. He's not a nose tackle, um, so and I and I wonder where he's going to to fit in. Um, you know, Derek Morgan is a guy that I'm having trouble figuring out how they're going to use him. How do you think that they'll use him? I think he'll stick at end, and then see what goes from there because he doesn't have that kind of athleticism to play linebacker. I don't think he does. E well, I, mean, I think that he will play defensive end as well. I'm, I'm with you. Yes, I completely agree there. Um, all right, well, the last pick. Let's talk about him. Zach Mettenberger. Yeah, he's, uh, he is a steal considering his pick location and his talent on tape and then in real life. Well, I mean, they did give up two draft picks for him, a six and a seven. Uh, yeah, it's, those picks are very meaningless. Well, I mean, rarely, rarely that they make the team, but... That's a Jason McCourty and a Cortland Finnegan. Yeah, still. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, um, a, a guy with, with talent... Um, another guy with some off the field stuff, with some on the field stuff. Um, you know, the diluted, the latest being the diluted sample at the combine. Titans take a chance on him. Do you see him as 
the kind of guy that the Titans can um, turn to and say, "This is this is our face of the franchise." Um, I th I think so. In 2015, after he takes a redshirt year, so to speak, to learn the system and then to learn the program, how to be a pro instead of going around and then. The word at LSU was he was a leader his senior year, so you grew up a lot after those alleged off-field incidents. All right. Well, you know, if I, I, for, to me, that's kind of a sad state of affairs that the Titans would think that a guy like Zach Mettenberger should be the face of their franchise, but I guess that's just me. Yeah, yeah if he doesn't have a six-round pick, so... Well, I mean, it's 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 curious. Do you think Jake Locker is going to um, is he is he Kim Wizen Wizen Hunt's guy for real? Um, it's hard to say because we've heard all the coach speak from years past. Right. And then, yeah. Yeah. Little, boom, Locker gets hurt, and then oh, is he the guy? Is he not the guy? Yeah, I mean, if if Jake Locker isn't the guy and um, if he gets hurt, um, you're looking at Charlie Whitehurst being your starter, I suppose. What? Well, how do you feel about that? Um, I'm a little ambivalent. I mean, it's he he's been around. He's a little nervous, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like we're rolling our chopped liver out there every week. So. Yeah. Um. I. You know, and we haven't even talked about him. Um, they also still have Tyler Wilson, you know, on the roster. So, yeah. Um, they are swimming in quarterbacks. What about free agency? How did you feel about their free agency moves? Al Woods, Wesley Woodyard, um, Dexter McCluster, Sean Phillips. Well, it was... Uh, it was a free agency that filled some of the death positions and then a little bit of pay, overpaying the stars because it's overall a death filling free agency class. Who did you think feel that they overpaid? Probably Woodyard based on his contract. Well, it's kind of similar to Wembley's contract, so we'll see. I don't know. Good linebackers are, you know, they're... They're um, nice to have, and as don't you feel like I have had this conversation lately? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. The Titans linebackers, in my opinion, have terribly underperformed the last couple of years. Yes, they have. Well, <laughs> yeah. Considering who their positional coach was last year. Well, yeah, that, and they're. Um, you know, both um, Zach Brown and Akeem Ayers were drafted in the second round. And, um, you know, um, Colin McCarthy, you can somewhat understand maybe because, you know, he started strong, but injuries have really hurt him. Um, do you think, can Colin McCarthy transition to a 3-4 and play that inside linebacker position? Um, I don't believe that he can because he was undersized for a 4-3. So, I mean, it, he's basically the Titans version of Dan Morgan. Yeah, so Dan Morgan, same school, have, same color. I've seen Ball. him. Yeah. I've seen him. I've seen him positioned in at the right inside linebacker spot. Don't you think? If he's going to make it, it's going to be at that left spot. Or do you think? Don't, I mean, don't you think the left um, inside linebacker spot is more ideally suited to him? I think so too. Um, it's he's basically Woodyard and him are the same type. They basically run and chase, so they're not exactly ideal for run stopping. Yeah, you know, it's going to be fun to see how all that. Um, all that plays out. Sean Phillips, where do you see him fitting in? He's a uh, guy that can play. He's like um, Derek Morgan, but a little bit more versatile in what he can do. Yeah, he's. Uh, I like the signing a lot. 
And even though he's over almost pushing 35, so who knows what he's got left in the tank. But he's a good mentor on and off the field, so he'll teach our guys what to do and what not to do. Yeah, um, I, I like the signing too. I, I kept saying, Titans, you need to take a look at Sean Phillips. And finally they, they did. They brought him in and signed him. And So do you think he's going to play? It looks like he's going to play linebacker for them. Yeah, it's, I don't know what to base off his Denver career off of because he had a whole stud defensive lineman around him. So he might be a linebacker as true fit. Yeah, I, I, I was curious to see how they were going to use him. Um, you might see him um, at defensive end, don't you think? Yeah, on passing downs, I think. Yeah, I could see him um, playing both of those positions. Um, the Michael Orr signing seemed to be the one that most people questioned. How did you feel about it? Well, I didn't like the contract, but I like the player. It's just the contract's a little too high for my tastes. Yeah, you know, it's basically just a one or two year deal. They can walk away from it um, easy, easily after two years and really after the first year. So it's a little bit of a low risk kind of situation, don't you think? Yeah, it's... I mean, if he sucks, if he sucks, if he's good, then we got to steal. Well, if he, if he sucks, then I think that you're going to see Taylor Lewan starting in his spot. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Um, you know, and I suppose, you know, maybe they'll give Byron Stingley a shot. We have, you know, what what we saw from him when he got an opportunity to play was kind of exciting. Um, you know, when you watched him develop and I think he played, you know, a little bit, not last year, not last season, but season before last, and looked good, so... Um, you know, maybe you'll see something of him. I don't know. Um, all right, I can't think of any more. We probably missed a, a free agent or two. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move on and talk a little bit about um, what to expect in what you expect in the division this year. You know, the Colts have kind of taken advantage of a very weak AFC South. Uh, but you've got new coaching staffs in both Houston and Tennessee. The Jaguars are rebuilding under um, their new coach, Gus Bradley. They, um, I thought, had a very nice draft. What did you think? Yeah, they had a pretty good draft. They filled their needs. and Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, I, I, I did, too. I thought that they had probably the best draft in the AFC South, and then followed by the Texans and the Titans and the Colts are um, in the bottom. I think that you would have to put the Titans, maybe put the Titans draft above the Colts, although it's probably debatable. Neither one had, I, I don't think, um, very exciting or good <laughs> drafts. But, you know, people people differ in opinion. That's okay. So what do you think to what do you think about um, the chances of another team uh, coming on and taking the title away from the Colts? Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult uh, considering Andrew Luck. He he's basically that he's basically the Colts. They still have some good weapons like uh, Robert Mathis, and then. His Who's suspended for four, four games? Yeah, but when yeah. <laughs> well, when he comes back, we'll see how he does. But uh, Reggie Wayne, he's he's up there, but he's still Reggie Wayne no matter what. And then we have the ever so iconic Trent Richardson, who has the worst per carry average and our dearly beloved Chris Johnson. <laughs> well, you know, uh, actually. Um, tweeted out and read a pretty interesting article over on the Battle Red blog, which is um, the Houston Texans um, fan community for SB Nation. And a guy over there did film study on Trent Richardson and basically said some of the things that I had been trying to say last year in that um, it wasn't 
all Trent Richardson's fault. Um, you know, I mean, I watched the games too, and I saw some of the things that he was talking about. The Colts offensive line was atrocious last year. Yeah, um, so we'll see. You know, we'll see how Trent Richardson does this year. Um, you know, a whole off season in their program, chance to learn their system. You know, maybe it'll make a difference. I, I suppose we'll see. But you're right, having Andrew Luck is always going to to mean that you've got a good chance to win. Um, the comeback kid, isn't that what they're calling him? So um, uh, they drafted um, Dante Moncrief, who is uh, w was um, a wide receiver on my list that I liked, and I think that that, um, that was the most exciting of their draft picks. So though I think that their se second round offensive lineman, a guy who's kind of versatile, you know, he might be able to come in and. Um, and, you know, earn a starting spot on that offensive line as bad as as it was. It's certainly, you know, not out of the question. The Texans, of course, with the number one overall pick, took the no-brainer selection with uh, Jadavion Clowney. Did you did you agree with that, or did you think that they should have gone quarterback? Um, I I agreed with the Clowney pick. I mean, it's no question. Once in a generation talent, so you have to take him, no matter what. There's always going to be quarterbacks. So, well, they took Tom Savage too, so they did take a quarterback, but they didn't take one until the fourth round. And um, so, can the Texans with Ryan Fitzpatrick, the Amish gun, um, can they up unseat the Colts from the top of the pinnacle? Well, uh, the Texans, they're going to have to rely on their defense a lot. Because Arian Foster is no longer Arian Foster, and Ben Tate's somewhere in Cleveland looking for Johnny Menzel. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Or LeBron. Yeah, and LeBron, too. And possibly Kevin Love, but... Yeah, yeah um... Arian Foster, I, I'm curious to see how he looks um, this year. Um, you know, you're hearing good things about him. He's healthy and and all of that, but you know, it's hard to come back from some of some of these things. And he had back surgery, and so yeah, you know, I guess that we will see. Um, not only did they take Jadavion Clowney, but they also got. Um, Louise Nix, um, who is a nice defensive tackle, he could um, earn some playing time as um, as a rookie. They took an offensive lineman that I think has a shot maybe to to make an impact. Um, you really kind of focused on their on their defense, so you would think that they're prepared to um, to ride the defense. What about the Andre Johnson? Situation. What do you make of it? It's uh, it's difficult considering he's been a uh, franchise icon for so long, and then but he's getting he, his skills are being slowly diminished. So what do you do? So you can't exactly trade him away. Yeah, um, they're in a difficult position there. Um, I, but I understand his. I understand where he's coming from. It's really sad. I mean, I, I feel badly for him. I, I do. Um, and that quarterback situation, it does, it's not, um, it's, it's not a situation that he can feel. He can't take any comfort there. So, um, all right. So, the Jacksonville Jaguars had, um, a, a very good draft. They take Blake Bortles. Everything coming out of Jacksonville indicates that they are prepared to sit Blake Bortles for the 2014 season and go with Chad Henney. Do you do you believe that or not? Uh, I kind of believe it, but in, it's. It's going to be difficult to sit Boros since he was such a high pick, and Henny's 
and he's been proven that he's service level, but he's not, you know, exactly a world beater. Yeah, I wonder about that too. Um, I, I definitely do. I um, I think the temptation is going to be strong. We'll see if they are able to resist that temptation. But um, yeah, you know, and from their perspective, they'll, they'll, they have to know sooner or later. And if he doesn't start this year, he's definitely going to start next year. Um, there's, there's no question whatsoever about that. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll see. Who do you think, between the two wide receivers that they selected, Marcus Lee and Allen Robinson, who do you think um, could make an impact this year? Hmm. Um, I would say uh, Allen Robinson because he's been well, well coached by the Texans head coach. Bill O'Brien while at Penn State, so he knows how to run the routes and be more fundamentally sound than Lee, who is more of a big play splash guy like Deshaun Johnson without the character questions. Yeah, yeah, and I completely agree with that, and I, I would have sort of said the same thing. Um, I, Alan Robinson is a big-bodied guy, and I think that he's going to, he, he will find a place um, in, in, in the Jaguars offense and I think that he's going to be a very good player for for them. They they took a lot of nice players. They got um, Kel, uh, Telvin Smith fell to them in like the fifth or sixth round. They were able to snag him. A nice draft for them. So um, we, we shall see how that uh, works out. So who, what is your prediction? Who um, who wins the division? Um, do I have to go non-homer? or? <laughs> uh, you can do whatever you want, baby. We accept all homers here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tennessee going 19 and 0. No, but not really. Um, <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> You think Tennessee? You think the Titans will go ten and six? Yeah. All right. I'm down with it. Yeah. What about the Colts? Are they going to go like six and ten? Yeah, I think once all the luck magic wears off, it, he's, that that team around them is not that good. So I think they'll go five hundred one of these years. Yeah. If if any of the teams in the AFC South hadn't sucked the last year, they could have easily taken the title from the Colts. The Colts were very beatable last season. The Titans had them on the ropes and and, and let them off. They should have won both of those games. I still might be a little bitter about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what about the Texans? Give me a prediction on their record, the Texans. Um, hmm. I think they go five and eleven. They're trying to sort out the quarterback situation, and then as we all saw last year, Ryan Fifth. It's an improvement back. from last year. Yeah, it's a considerably marked improvement from last year. But Tom all Savage, right, now what? Huh? You think Tom Savage will end up starting? I think he'll start the, at the end of the year. Could be. You think he'll just leapfrog Case Keenan? Um, I don't know. I think we. I think we all know what Case Keenum's got. He's been in the league for a couple of years now, so. I don't know. I guess so. Um, but he's only started in like a few games. He didn't even make the active. I don't think in his first year, right? Yeah, he was practice squad. Yeah, so still a young guy and still relatively um, unproven, if not unproven. But you know what? You can say whatever you want to say, but Andre Johnson put up career numbers um, when Case Keenum was under center. Yeah. So that says something. What about the what about the Jaguars? What what do you predict? What's their record? Um hmm. I think seven and nine. That defense is pretty good, so it'll carry them a lot of games. 
All right. Okay, so the Titans won the division at 10-6. and six. Um, We've got two teams going – well, no, the Jaguars going 7-9, and nine, the Colts going 6-10, and 10, and the Texans going 5-11, and 11, finishing in the basement. I like it. I could live with it. I could definitely, definitely live with it. Um, so who is your – what are your two – Getting ready to wind down. Before I let you go, two predictions: offensive rookie of the year and defensive rookie of the year. Um. Hmm. Wow, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I'd probably go. Hmm. Sammy Watkins. Yeah. And then, yeah. And defensive player, I would go. Uh, hmm. No Jadavion, no J no Jadavion Clowney. Uh, I think he'll he'll buckle under all the pressure and the expectations. All right. Yeah. CJ. CJ Mosley from Baltimore. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I was so sad the Titans didn't draft him. I was so sad. I was like, wow. Well, I was sad for a lot of reasons, but um. Yeah, um, yeah, big, big, big C.J. Mosley fan. So I think that he's going to do very well there. Ryan Shazier, um, I think that he's going to get plenty of opportunities in Pittsburgh. So we'll see. It should be fun to watch. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. Tell everybody, once again, who you are and where they can find you. I am Chelsea Young, a.k.a. Knowles, on um, Music City Miracles. And you can follow me on Twitter on... Ducking Knowles 24-7. It's all one word. And on Facebook, just look me up on Joseph Young. Well, I'll definitely tweet out your Twitter handle with a link to the show. I'm Sharona. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports by Sharona. This is the Extra Point. We come to you live every Friday night, usually at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, talking AFC South and NFC South. We will be back next week. We're going to be doing some training camp previews. Uh, we may do that show next week. We may wait another week. Um, we've got some interesting things to talk about from some of the other writers. So still trying to figure out what next week's show is going to be about. But uh, stay tuned. We'll definitely let you know. And it will be something related to the AFC or NFC South. That's for sure. Be sure to check out the website, www.nationalgridarnetwork.com. Have a great Friday night, and ahala.